Welcome to another episode of Thrift Flip where I take you on a journey with me as I transform basic thrifted pieces into eclectic outfits as I revamp my wardrobe. In today's video, we'll be transforming this denim maxi skirt now. I had already cut the skirt, can you see? <laughs> I was not planning on shooting this video, but then halfway I was like, mm, why not just shoot it? And then I decided to shoot it. So here you go. Check out how I transformed this maxi skirt into a two-piece denim set. So after gathering all my tools of trade, it's time to lay and cut this piece. So like I said, I already cut the skirt part, so that is going to be separated just to show you a visual of what i'm going for and then i stitched the sides of the skirt to cinch it in a bit so let's put that to the side and work on the top now you can see the denim is very stretchy which i like if you've been watching my thrift flip videos you know i always put my pieces on fold because i like the front on fold and the back on fold so that when i'm cutting i'm cutting equal pieces and for this one, I considered taking down the hemline and the center front, which is cut into two, of course, because of the slit, because I needed extra fabric. And you can see I was really struggling with the front pattern because it was bigger than the actual fabric. But the good thing is this fabric is stretchy and I ended up figuring it out. So I grabbed my seam reaper and began to take down my hemline and the center front just so I can have extra fabric to work with. So this process was actually necessary because I needed also some straps from these pieces. So this was necessary. <laughs> so once I was through with that, you can see I have extra fabric to work with. And now it was just a matter of placement and cutting the pieces out. Now this thrift flip is not like the previous ones because those ones I usually have an idea as to what I want to do. For this one, I was just thinking as I go, which is usually so frustrating, but I figured it out. So what I did was open up the dart at the waistline so that I can have that peplum flared effect. You can see how it looks. I have some extra room at the waistline but the pattern ended up going outside. So I'll just figure that out as I go. And look, I got some extra fabric for my strap. So quite necessary. <laughs> so I liked the fact that I left the waistline rugged. Yeah, it ended up looking really good at the end. So you'll see, you'll see. So when I was cutting the front, I ended up putting some extra allowance, which I'll later on take them out, but yes. So for the side seam of the front, I was like, do I fold the pattern and work around it or do I just leave it like that? I ended up leaving it like that and just working with the pattern as is, you see. And that ended up working out because again, this fabric was quite stretchy. <laughs> So for the back part, I did not leave any allowance and that's why I had to go back to the front and take out the allowance. But yes, it worked out because again, fabric is stretchy. <laughs> so I notched at the waistline, like below, like where my waist cinches in. That's why I, I notched. Notching helps with just your efficiency when it comes to sewing. So yes. For the front, I decided, let me make it a V. So a deep V at the front. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. And I didn't have to cut out the pattern. I just folded it because that's a pattern hack. Yes. And this is the same pattern I used for my previous thrift flip. If you haven't watched that one, I'll put a link up there so you can go check it out. So I like to pin my front piece and the back piece together. And I do shoulder to shoulder, side seam to side seam, and this makes it so efficient when it comes to sewing. I sew faster. I am done in no time. <laughs> 
that's why I love doing this. So let's move on to sewing and serging. And serging is another name for overlocking. So after threading my sewing machine, it's time to start stitching. Now for the shoulders, I thought I was going to do a French seam, which means like stitching really tiny on the wrong side and then coming and top stitching on the right side. That way I don't have to serge or overlock. But then I quickly realized that that will not work for the shoulder that I'm going for. So I had to seam rip it up. <laughs> So I ended up stitching just the normal way. I will end up serging because I need the shoulders to have some form of like gathers later. So yeah, that's why I did that. For the waistline, I wanted some slits on the side. So that's why I am doing notches on the side and I don't stitch through all the way down. So I do the same thing on the other side and yeah, that's how it looks. So we, we are going to serge or overlock the side seams, the shoulders and also the armhole. So later on I thought, hmm, why not do a deep V on the back as well. So this is what we are doing. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. We're going to do a deep V at the front and at the back. So when it comes to overlocking, I just overlock minding the slit because I don't have to overlock the slit. I'll come and fold and stitch it later. So, yeah. So I end up serging the way I just stitch, which is side seams to shoulder to the other shoulder to the other side seam, just so I'm efficient, you know. And then I decided to also serge my skirt that I had cut and folded before. So, yeah. I mean, we are being efficient over here <laughs> and neat at the same time. Yes, I like to tie a knot on my overlock just so they hold because I don't like just snipping them off like that. Yeah, so right here we are doing the armhole and yeah, easy peasy. <laughs> So for this slits, like I had mentioned before, I'm going to fold and stitch them. Then later on, also flip it over and top stitch, just so it looks nice and neat. <laughs> and just like I had mentioned in my previous video, just because my clothes are thrift flips, don't mean that I am not going to be as professional as it needs it to be, okay? <laughs> So that's how you see I'm taking my sweet time to make sure that everything is nice and neat and mwah, pristine. <laughs> so for the armhole, there's not much to do other than just to fold and stitch it around. And you guys can see what I'm talking about. Nice and neat. <laughs> Next, I grab the straps and sew them together because I'm going to need a really long strap that is going to help me finish off my V neckline. Sewing a V neckline is not the easiest thing to do. Yeah, <laughs> on the difficulty scale, it's like six out of 10. But I'm going to show you how I do it and first things first, I like to pin the strap against the neckline and then once that is done, I go ahead and stitch. Now when I get to the V, I like to leave my needle pointing at the exact V before I turn my piece on the other side, which is also known as a bodice, to the other side and then I end up notching where the V is. Did you see me do like that, that small slit? Notching does help the fabric lay flat, especially at the V point. Yes, and then I fold from there. So match up the seam at the center back and then start stitching from that point. And then it gives me this nice effect, which I really like. Yeah. 
and I'm pretty sure I serged the seam before top stitching and then you can see how neat it looks and how flat it lays. So then I do the center front and I just fold and stitch. The first fold I stitch it on the wrong side and then the second fold I top stitch and it looks really, really neat. To cinch up my waistline, I use an elastic band and this just gives it that cape plum look. But my elastic is 2.5 inches wide so I decided to cut it into two. And yes, I measured my waistline where my waist cinches in. And then I reduced the, I think, 8 inches small elastic piece, smaller than my waistline, so that I can, it can give me the nice gathers that I'm looking for. You can see how it's nicely gathered. Yes. And that's how it looks. I think it turned out really nicely. It looks really good. So the other straps that are remaining, I'm going to make straps for the center front. Now something to just hold them together and create that bow effect. Yeah, so one side I fold it really nice and beautiful like it's sealed and then the other side can be like a raw edge because that side is going to be sewn eventually onto the actual garment. Yes, like that, like so. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I sew it. I sew it one side, flip it and sew it on the other side. How I want it to look at the end. So I do this on the waistline and then I do it at the top V and this is how it turned out. Nice. But then again I remembered I have to gather my shoulders so I use the elastic band again and then just do the same thing I did to the waistline and look at how it looks. It looks really good. So yeah, now when you add the skirt and you see how it looks really good let's try it on and this is how it looks i mean it looks so good it turned out so great i like the ash gray i like how the top just fits me and i wanted to ask you guys do you look at me or do you look at my reflection the reflection gives you another angle that you wouldn't have seen unless you see me in person yes I mean, yo, this turned out so cute. I love it. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. I can think of many ways to style it, especially now that it's a two-piece. It looks so good. I can wear it separately. I can wear it to pomoja <laughs> together. I can layer it. I mean, the possibilities are endless when it comes to two-piece. And I love how it turned out. I love the raw edges at the bottom of the skirt and at the bottom of the top. Like the hemlines are just rough and rugged and they look so cute. <laughs> yes, so for the top, I think putting on like the, what are they called? Boob tape would work if you don't want to if I don't want to get the brush showing. So yeah, I think that would be the hack for the bra. <laughs> and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah. See you on the next one.